Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us. I'm Josh Many. We begin this afternoon with continuing coverage of COVID-19 North Dakota Watch. The Department of Health is reporting a record high for the amount of active cases here in our state. According to the Williams County Sheriff's Office, a man was shot after breaking into a home near Williston. Marathon Dickinson Renewable Fuels Facility is a major economic driver for Stark County with 100 full-time employees and 20 contractors, 19 million in annual local wages and benefits, and 2.1 million in property taxes. Our sister station KTLA looks back at the extraordinary life and career of the broadcast giant who helped define American conversation for more than half a century. Welcome to Good Day Dakota. I'm Josh Many. Thank you for waking up with us this Monday morning. In our top story, the search continues for a man who fled from law enforcement into a sunflower field on Sunday. Senator, you mentioned that a lot of these oil wells were abandoned a long time ago. But what about now? What can federal regulators do today to hold accountable companies that abandon wells? Five years ago, this was the site of the largest encampment with thousands of water protectors, many of whom were indigenous. Now, it's easy to look back on No Dapple as a divisive time where one side was pitted against the other. But in all actuality, it was a time of togetherness for indigenous communities. Welcome back. Back in late June, Governor Doug Burgum and Lieutenant Governor Brent Sanford praised the sale of Coal Creek Station to Rainbow Energy Center LLC as a landmark victory for the future of energy production in North Dakota. Now, Brooke, the interesting thing is that Montana census population shows that it's grown so much that they're going to need a second U.S. House seat. And of course, Secretary Zinke, he's running for that. Reporting in Watford City for KX News, I'm Josh Minnie. Brooke, back to you. Minot police are investigating a stabbing that happened at a hotel in the northwest part of town. According to authorities, a 65-year-old man was stabbed several times just before 4 yesterday morning. Before officers arrived, the man fled the room where the stabbing happened and received aid from other guests and hotel staff. The investigation revealed the man knows who stabbed him, but no arrests have been made. He was taken to a hospital and is expected to survive. The investigation is ongoing. As the pandemic worsened in the state last year, North Dakota courts suspended jury trials for several months. That pause in trials led to a backlog in cases, and when things resumed last year, as many as 30 could be scheduled in a single day. Nearly a year later, one county's court is just now catching up. Burley County State's Attorney Julie Lawyer says from January to May of this year, attorneys were busy working through months of delayed cases. She expects things to become more manageable by the end of this month. So we're getting over that hump now. Up. Construction will begin on a new third courtroom in Burley County in September, which lawyer says should help cut down on caseload. Governor Doug Burgum and Ag Commissioner Doug Goring met with Pierce County farmers and ranchers yesterday as they voiced their concerns about our state's current drought conditions. Commissioner Goring says about 96% of the state is experiencing pretty significant drought and 92% is at dangerous levels. He says livestock producers are being impacted the greatest due to a lack of feed and water needed to manage their herds. More than a dozen farmers and ranchers voiced their concerns yesterday, stating they're in desperate need of assistance. And if this drought continues, then the cattle industry in the state may go extinct. Goring says there are programs out there to help, but he and so many others don't believe it's enough. One of the issues in concern. Goring says if you're a farmer or rancher in need of assistance, you can call the state Ag Department office and they will help you. A Colorado company has now agreed to settle alleged Clean Water Act violations stemming from the company's oil production activities here in North Dakota. The EPA says Phoenix Petroleum LLC has agreed to pay a $50,000 penalty as part of a settlement. The EPA says inspections of two of the company's tank batteries in Divide and Williams counties in 2015 found inadequate spill prevention plans and containment measures. Federal regulators say discharges from the facilities have the potential impact on White Earth Creek, which is a tributary to the White Earth River. The EPA now says those problems have been corrected. 
affected. A joint effort is working towards a statewide charging network for electric vehicles. Capital Electric Cooperative in the North Dakota DOT held a tailgate event at the state capitol grounds yesterday. The goal to get people up to speed on the availability and benefits of electric vehicles. Everything from motorcycles to bobcats and even Teslas were on display. Josh Schaefner, who works for the co-op, says it's important to host these kinds of events. The number of models that have been announced to be available. Schaefner says the number of people who are plugging in is growing and he expects the tailgate event to be even bigger next year. Now let's take a look at today's top stories. Obamacare has survived another major legal challenge. The Supreme Court dismissed a third effort to dismantle the Affordable Care Act. The court ruled 7-2 to two that Texas, along with other Republican-led states and two individuals, had no right to bring their lawsuit in federal court. Just after President Biden demanded this week that Russian President Vladimir Putin crack down on cyber thieves operating inside Russia, a new report shows ransomware attacks are exploding up to 93 percent per week. This month alone, more than 1,200 organizations are hit per week. And after President Biden signed Juneteenth into law, today is the first time America celebrates it as a federal holiday. Juneteenth commemorates the end of slavery when black people in Texas on June 19, 1865, were given the news they were free. Since June 19th falls on a Saturday this year, federal workers have the day off today. Coming up after Good Day Dakota, CBS This Morning will bring you more on the big stories of the day. Juneteenth, also called Emancipation Day, will be celebrated locally as well. Organizers are ready to kick off Minot's big event this weekend to celebrate the history behind the new now national holiday. Tomorrow, starting at noon at the old Kmart parking lot, vendors, games, and live music will be open to all. This is the third year the Minot African American Heritage Council has put on the event in support of the day. But this year, organizers say they're celebrating even more as it's a new mark in history. So it kind of started with earlier this year, where North Dakota um, became uh, one of the, the 48th state uh, to actually recognize Juneteenth as a holiday. And as I just found out today, that the House, uh, the House and the Senate of the United States, and now President Joe Biden, is now about to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. The event is free and will last until about 5 p.m. Again, that's Saturday in Minot. All right, switching gears here and taking a look at our weather, Amber. It should be a nice day tomorrow for Juneteenth celebration.